Okay, good morning, and yes, welcome to Galaxy Today. Uh, my name is Rose Blossom, and uh, we will be talking about uh, minimum wages. Of course, we have the minimum wages from 18,000 naira now to 30,000. And of course, Wari say that would help uh, Nigerian workers uh, when it comes to the Nigerian economy. And talking on that, we have a special guest today with us. Uh, let's welcome, of course, uh, Iga Lo, Lucky. Yeah, Iga Yota. Iga Lucky, sorry. Iga Yota. Yeah, Iga Yota. Lucky. Iga Yota, Lucky. Okay, the PRO of uh, Take, Take It, it Back, back movement. movement. Yes. Okay, welcome to the show. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. All right, thanks for joining us now, uh, Igo Yato. Let's look at uh, this particular issue. Because from what we hear, you know, the president is saying that it has not actually approved the 30,000, it only accepted the 30,000 proposal. I want to get your reactions concerning that. Yes, let me first of all thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to first of all sympathize with the Nigerian workforce. Sympathize? Mm -hmm. I'm sympathizing with the Nigerian Labour Congress. Why do you? Why are you sympathizing? I'm sympathizing with them because at this age and time, we are still discussing a salary wage around thirty thousand naira mm. for a country that applies itself like as a giant of Africa, the world's most populous black nation with enormous potentials to turn Africa around. Mm. We are still so we are trying to get a minimum wage of even that is even less than a a hundred dollar the president's statement saying he had accepted the, the 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 decision of the workers to yeah. push for a thirty thousand minimum wage goes to show his deceitful tendencies how do you mean deceitful tendency the president as you know has always been a go slow kind of person the workers before the tripartite committee was set up last November we were demanding for something around fifty six thousand if you, if if you if you would remember remember last year Ms. Ama Pepul shared a committee as you recall mm. that actually midwife the entire negotiations and mm. they did their 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 report and submitted to him last week. Yesterday I had Miss Amma Purple in one of the sister stations yeah. doing an interview saying that she, she believes and she hopes that the president will implement the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. That is to show that they are still not even sure if it is doable. Now, for us in TIB, we, we are telling the Nigerian workers that our government, if elected next year, mm. we offer the Nigerian workers nothing less than a hundred thousand naira. Looking at the hundred thousand naira yeah. and um, its feasibility and all of that, you know, yeah. right now, you know, the state governments across the country yeah. are actually complaining they've not been able to pay 18,000 naira, you know, even the 30,000 naira, you know, there were some back and forth before this eventual agreement uh, that was announced on Monday, uh, Monday night. But the thing is, right now, if the, the center will, maybe just in case you guys get into uh, office. Not in case, we'll get into okay, office. Okay, so but the thing is that, how would it be, how would it spread across board for the states? Okay. You see, part of the reasons why young people like myself and Omoyele Shogore are into this is because the set of leaders that we have now, they appear to be incompetent. They appear to be confident in the sense that at this age and time, we are still largely dependent on just one source of revenue. That's oil, as you know. Talking about how the minimum wage will be, will be carried out by states, our government is bringing to the fore modern materials. That is Nigerians that are modern, that are in tune with global trends, a 21st century kind of leadership, whereby a leader will sit and think outside the box. Today, as I talk with you here now, the number of the Nigerian elites that are doing their businesses across the country, they have been evading tax, you know. Nigeria is not a tax efficient 
nation who mop up all the taxes in this country, all the value taxes will be mop up into the federal purse. And states also will follow suit because our manifesto... Oh, we can't start talking uh, about manifestos here, but let's really talk about the main issues right now. Okay. You talked about internally generated revenue and mono economy, which is the bane uh, of um, past administration, uh, administration or yeah. just being solely on you oil. Know, oil. You know, how do you think the state government can actually key into this issue of generating funds for themselves so they don't even go cap in hand at the end of the month to the federal executive council, I mean, the FAC rather, to yeah, get, uh, yes. you know. Someone called a kind of uh, uh, federalism, uh, a filiboto federalism some time mm -hmm. ago, and I share in that person's thought as well. You see, what we're having now is just a situation whereby the government just wait till the end of the month. Everybody mm -hmm. flies to Abuja to collect their monthly handout from the federal post as FAC. Now what our government is planning, our party as a party, our movement as, mm -hmm. as a movement that is coming to rescue Nigeria out of this morass, mm -hmm. we are setting up an agenda to block all these leakages you are seeing everywhere. It will, it will amaze you to know that every year, we have between five and six billion dollars mm. of Nigeria's money being moved away by these corrupt government officials. And as soon as we get into government, we are going to block those outlets. Okay. As soon as we block them, that money mm. alone amounts to about two trillion, mm. two point one trillion in short, two trillion naira. Today, Nigeria's budget as of today mm. is about eight trillion plus. That's about twenty five percent. The two trillion that I'm telling you now, is about 25% of to Nigeria's budget as of today. If we have 2 trillion naira blocked, is that not enough to service That's the, enough. Okay. the wage bill? Okay, coming from another angle now, we okay. have a lot of people saying uh, yeah. having to have a minimum wage to be 30,000 naira, okay. there will be inflation of uh, food prices. Which inflation, my sister? Listen, let me tell you. Since they start stealing our country, since 1958 is now. Have there been inflation? Have people been surviving? This money that they are stealing, we'll use it to put in workers' pockets. They will spend it on the economy legitimately. Okay. The, the monies are not actually yielding economic growth and, and amounting to economic development because it is, wrong, it is on the wrong hand. These guys know nothing. Before 1999, most of them were virtually beggars. They were all paupers. Mm -hmm. They are living in one bedroom. Some of them don't, don't even have house. They don't know how to do business. They will steal government money and put it in hotels. Take it to, to the Caribbean, take it to the US, take it to the UK and other parts of Asia mm -hmm. to put there. These monies will put into Nigeria's workers' pocket. They will spend the money here in Nigeria. It will buffer our economy. Okay. So forget that inflation. That inflation doesn't exist anywhere. Okay, well... It is doable. Well, it's very doable, but I have a lot of people saying that, and they are still banking on the fact that, yes. for the fact they have raised it from 18 to 30, yes. there is a very high probability That some of... states may not be able to pay, right? Yes, exactly. But the same states that are not going to, that may not be able to pay, right, are still having a large army of political, uh, political aids, like in Delta State, Governor Kua have over 2,300 political heads. Okay. If, you, if, you, if, you, if, uh, if you pay those heads, say a minimum of 200,000 naira okay. per month, or 250 per se, okay. that will amount to over half a billion. Okay. If you pump half a billion into the educational sector of Delta State, or the health sector, it's every month we put in 500, 500 million. 500 million naira every month just into this health sector or the education, one primary school. Don't you know what that we we effect to? It will amount to. Okay, no, we'll, we'll take we'll take a quick break. Uh, we're still looking at um, the 30,000 naira minimum wage and all of the issues plus um, yeah. the reactions uh, and trailing that development. Uh, we still have um, uh, Mr. Loki Iotayo with us here in the studios. We'll be right back after this quick time and don't go away.
But it's not campaign now. All right, welcome back. It's still Galaxy. Today, and we're looking at the 30,000 Naira minimum wage and all of the issues. Okay, you, you talked about uh, this increment not leading to inflation. But the thing is that a lot of people are saying that uh, it might because uh, once uh, um, a lot of money is in the pocket of workers, um, you know, inadvertently the price of goods and services, even the traders in the market will know that there's so much money to, to spend. And that the, even people in the education sector, private schools and everything, have had reactions. They say that um, it's now time for them to increase school fees. Before this increment, mm. school, school fees have been increased. Mm. Before this uh, wage increment, uh, uh, commodity prices are high. If you take a look at the statistics in the last two, three months, you see that the inflation rate has jacked up mm. because nothing is happening in government. Our government will be run on two things. Which is? Reputation oh, and credibility. Okay. I that is talking to you here, the peer of Take It Back, if I found one thing, I will be in jail in, in our government. That's the kind of government we want to run. Look, let me tell you this issue of inflation, increased salary to lead to inflation. It's because nothing is happening in the country. There's no economic activity, no construction, nothing. Our government will ignite our power sector. Our infrastructure that is, that, is in, that is in comatose now will revamp the system as soon as there is construction eh? in, in, the, in the country. You see jobs everywhere. And, so, and as soon as there is a job, all of this will amount to economic growth, okay. economic buoyancy. And it is doable. 100,000 is even the minimum we can even, we can even pay, the minimum, minimum. That is, if our government, after the first four years, yes. by the time we are we are we are done with our with our with our first set of plan for this country in four years. You even you even join Nigerians to say that hundred thousand is not even good enough. Hundred thousand now you say might not be good enough. But looking yeah. at this right now, a lot of people are saying that minimum wage, no minimum wage, at the end of the day it only favors some groups of people. How in your opinion, looking at it holistically, you know, yes. how do you think it will actually affect the common man who has a shop and who has um, two workers working for him, you know, maybe a hairdresser who employs them, um, two stylists, yeah. you know, how would this, all of this reflect to, to them? Because everybody's talking about minimum wage. To them, they don't really understand them, how it actually concerns them. If I ask you now, how many, how many Nigerians of, mm. of working age are in the public service? Mm. How many Nigerians? It's few, they're few, very minimal. Society all over the world mm. is not driven, or economies all over the world is not just driven by a civil service structure. Why are we, why are we reducing our national discourse and national economy to just civil service or civil, uh, salaries of civil servants? Mm. So, some persons, um, we should be discussing artisans. Ah, these guys contributing to the productivity in the country. Civil servants are just a, 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 a unit. Okay. Of the working population, the minimum wage we are talking about here, mm. the minimum wage, thirty thousand or eighteen thousand, as it were, is not even enough for the launch of some of all these government officials. So that means you're you're saying that uh, the thirty thousand increment it will make no will... difference in the system. <laughs> it will okay. make no difference. Okay, let okay. us take some reactions <laughs> right now. Uh, uh, the proposal by the AAC to pay a Nigerian workers a minimum wage of 100,000 is welcome. Many workers are 100% in support. All right, uh, it's nice thing to have increment of salaries, but have we thought of the effect on inflation and the bills that have to come with it? And Everyone that's what I've been telling you. To pay I've likewise. been telling you, yeah, the hazards, the mm. hazards associated with it mm. will be shaked when the economy infrastructure are put, in place. are put in place, things are working fine, there's accountability, there's probity in government, there's transparency. Mm. All these things are happening because we don't have a system. That so we want okay, to come fine. and organize the system. Right. When the system is working, you even agree with me. I've told you before okay. that the Nigerian workers will even say 100,000 is even it's just much. too small. Okay, fine. How, okay. Much, how much do you think some countries are paying for labor, labor for just one hour? One hour. Okay. I was told last week that in the UK they are even proposing to be paying ten pounds per 
per hour. If you work eight hours, work eight hours a day, that will amount to about 80, 80 pounds. pounds. How much is 100 pounds now? It's not five. Uh, it's not uh, uh, fifty thousand. Five hundred per pound. Fifty right. thousand. If you work fifty thousand right, a day, we, compare your status let's with round somebody up, living right. in Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Are you? Can you compare the disparity? Okay. okay. So what right. is hundred thousand? All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Lucky. But good morning. If government can implement minimum wage, the same government should monitor the inflation of food prices, transportation, house rent, and school fees. You're talking about infrastructure. You've mentioned we have a that. housing policy okay. for Nigerians. All right. Uh, more, more reactions. The APC and PDP um, have nothing good for Nigerians. Yes, if the got. PDP say they have reopened it, it's a lie. Okay, just send SMSs if you want to participate. The government should cut cost of their expenses. And, they are uh, bogus expenses. They should cut them down. All right. How one person be moving with 10 cars? Waste. All oh. that will block all those waste stages. All right, uh, look, we have to go because uh, we are present of time. But once again, let us talk on our final note right now. Okay. In your opinion, you know, what is the ideal minimum wage for the Nigerian worker? The ideal minimum wage for the Nigerian worker, the least mm. they should be collected as at to, as at today should be that hundred thousand naira. All right, okay. we'll leave it at that. Nice. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to you. We've been thank speaking you so to Iwoyato Lucky. He's the P R O Take It Back Movement. Many thanks for joining us and yeah, being a part you. of this discussion. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having me. All right, so in a moment when we return, we've been looking at the thirty thousand naira minimum wage or hundred thousand naira as proposed <laughs> by the AAC. In a moment when we return, we'll be looking at drug abuse and addiction. You know, a whole lot of Nigerian youth have actually fallen prey to this issue of um, drug abuse. How do we stem these issues in the board and how do we begin to make our youth know that they can channel their energies to positivity and not to societal um, vices? In a moment, we have um, a guest who will be treating that when we return to join us again. <coughs> If anybody give you your banner, sky, if sugar daddy give you your cocaine, Simba. Simba. 